Welcome back, we'll pop to lesson 4.4, which is triangle proofs. Our central question is, how do triangle properties assist in solving real world problems? If two figures are congruent, then corresponding sides are congruent and corresponding angles are congruent. It's actually a phrase that says corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And you'll see this written out as CP, CT, C. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. This means that congruent segments have the same lengths and congruent angles have the same measures. Oh, I spelled measures wrong. Okay, so CPCTC. Example one, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Find the missing lengths or the missing angle measures. Well, ABC is congruent to DEF. That means AB is congruent to DE, and BC is congruent to EF, and AC is congruent to DF. And since the triangles are congruent to each other, their corresponding pieces are congruent to each other. So AB, we know. BC, we know. We do not know AC. Well, AC is congruent to DF, and since DF is 3.5, AC is 3.5. Okay? Um, from the second triangle, we'll call this one triangle 1, ABC, and triangle 2, DEF. From the second triangle, we do not know how long DE is. But DE is congruent to AB, so since AB is 2.6, DE is 2.6. Okay. Um, we also do not know how long FE is, or you could call it EF. But since EF is equal to BC, since BC is 3.7, EF is 3.7 centimeters as well. Okay? So the co corresponding sides of congruent triangles are congruent. The same is true, though, for the angles. Okay? Angle A is equal to angle D. Angle B is equal to angle E. And angle F it's congruent to angle C. So we don't know the measure of angle A, but A is congruent to D, and we know that D is 73, so angle A is 73 degrees. We don't know the measure of angle B, but it's congruent to angle E, since angle E is 65 degrees, angle B is 65 degrees. And we don't know the measure of angle C, but it's congruent to angle F, and since angle F is 22 degrees, angle C is 42 degrees. That's what it means by congruent parts, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Let's look at example two. In triangle ABC, I'm sorry, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Find the given side length or the uh, angle measure. So we're looking for EF. Now EF EF are the second two letter, the second and third letter, so it's congruent to BC. Well, I know that BC is 25 inches. That means EF is also going to be 25 inches. Okay, let me mark that back. So we know that EF is congruent to BC. So since BC is 25 inches, EF is also 25 inches. Okay. Now we're going to find AB. And AB are the first two letters of triangle ABC, so it's congruent to DE, which are the first two letters of triangle DEF. So we're going to set up our equation. We don't know how long AB is, but we know it's 3x plus 8, and we know it's equal to DE, which is 5x. Okay, so we're going to solve for x. 
Subtract 3x from both sides, we get 8 equals 2x. Divide both, both sides by 2, we have 4 equals x. Now, they didn't ask us to find x, they asked us to find ab, so we're going to plug that in. So we have ab is equal to 3 times 4 plus 8. We replace the x with 4. ab is equal to 12 plus 8. ab is equal to 20 inches. Okay, so we had to solve for x, and then we plugged x in to find the length of ab. Now the measure of angle d, we also do not know, but we know that the measure of angle d is equal to the measure of angle a. Okay, because they are corresponding angles from congruent triangles. So we're going to solve, we'll set up, uh, angle d is 6y plus 2, and it's equal to angle A, which is 5y plus 11. Again, we're going to solve for y. So subtract 5y from both sides, we have y plus 2 equals 11. Subtract 2 from both sides, we have y equals 9. We need to go back in and plug in y. So the measure of angle D is 6y plus 2. So 6 times 9 plus 2, 54 plus 2, angle D equals 56 degrees. So again, we have to set them up equal to each other. We solve for the variable and then plug the variable in. Now, the next four problems are all proofs, and we're going to do those completely in class. But the main thing is that you understand here that congruent triangles have corresponding congruent sides and corresponding congruent angles. Once I know that the sides, I'm sorry, once I know that the angles are, uh, uh, once I know that the triangles are congruent, I can break apart the pieces and say the corresponding pieces are congruent as well. That's it for this lesson. Please make sure you have that done. We will do examples three, four, five, and six in class, but I really need to make sure that you have the homework done. If you have any questions, please write it in the margins. Otherwise, I will see you in class. Have a great day, Wolfpack.